Dear students, we will cover in this module on uh, migration of uh, various social and religious groups. How migration among uh, these religious groups make uh, variations in the context of uh, the development and also we, the major learning objectives that will be covered is uh, to talk about the net migration rate state wise and also the extent of migration that uh, occurs among various religious groups, the patterns that is there in the migration flows and also the influence of uh, remittances across different religious groups and its effects are the major focus in this module. If when we talk about the, the flow of migration, the state wise net migration rate is an important indicator and the data when we analyze it clearly shows a very clear uh, pattern. For instance, the interstate lifetime net migration rate that is in migration minus out migration by rural and urban areas if we categorize separately with respect to sex based on the place of birth data from 2001 census, it can give a very clear cut uh, variations across the states. For instance, among the major states in the country, Uttar Pradesh followed by Bihar, Orissa, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan, Uttaranchal and Andhra Pradesh have recorded net loss of the population of the state as out migration states. The other states for instance, the state of Maharashtra, Gujarat, West Bengal, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Delhi, Haryana and Punjab, they show as uh, gaining the population as in the in-migration states. Most of the smaller states and union territories such as uh, Chandigarh, Pondicherry, Arunachal Pradesh, Goa and Lakshadweep, they showed net immigration. The state of Assam for instance show very low net gain of uh, only 0.1 for males but net loss of 1.54 millions for females. The data thus clearly reveals the huge variations that exist across these states when we talk about uh, the data on migration. The unrest in the state for example in Assam during 1980s seems that it is no more attractive destination for uh, uh, migrants. Both rural and urban areas of states of Uttar Pradesh, Uttaranchal especially urban areas, Bihar, Rajasthan, Orissa and Jharkhand in the case of rural, Kerala for instance urban areas, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, rural Chhattisgarh and rural Madhya Pradesh, they have recorded net loss of population when uh, we talk about interstate migration. The urban areas of Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand and West Bengal, they showed net in migration while rural part of uh, these states show net out migration. The table clearly provides the huge variations that exist state wise when we focus on lifetime net migration rate separately for rural and urban areas and also within each uh, uh, area with respect to sex based on the 2001 census which have been worked out by taking migration from place of birth as a criterion. In 2001 first time census data are tabulated for the social groups such as scheduled castes and scheduled tribes in the country. The migration level among scheduled castes and scheduled tribes indicate that about 25.3 percent of scheduled castes and 25.4 percent of the scheduled tribes have reported as migrants within the state based on place of last residence. It may be remembered that the information on interstate movements of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes they were not published by census authorities and therefore the incidence of migration of these two groups cannot be ascertained. Out of the total migrants within the state, more than three-fourths of migrants reported to move within the districts that is uh, intra-districts 
to the extent of 76.9% uh, among scheduled castes and 83.5% among scheduled tribes. The table also presents the level of migration among scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and other backward classes OBCs which is worked out based on the national sample survey data the 55th round which was conducted during 1999 to 2000 and 38th round of 1983. The incidence of migration among the male scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and OBCs was little lower than other groups in rural areas. While in urban areas, scheduled castes have reported higher percentage of uh, migration. The migration according to city size class shows very noteworthy differences. The increase size class shows positive increase in the proportion of migrants in all the social groups. In million plus cities, among males, nearly 39% of the scheduled tribes have reported as migrants while it was about 27 percent among other groups. The classification of migrants by type of migration that is intra-district, intra-districts and interstate shows noteworthy differences. For instance, in rural areas, the scheduled tribes reported higher percentage of migrants within the district movements while other backward castes and other groups indicate higher percentage towards higher city size class towns. The movement to million plus cities was dominated by interstate and inter district migrants, while small size towns that is less than 50,000 population is dominated by intra district migrants. The table clearly depicts the percentage share of migrants in different social groups categorized under rural and urban within rural and urban separately for male and female and the social groups represented categories are ST, SC, OBC, others with uh, separately for uh, each year that is 1999-2000 and also 1983. The major source is uh, computed from national sample survey unit level data from 38th and uh, 55th round which was published as an article on a social group migration by Deepthi Jain in www.livemint.com under the heading is migration a harbinger of social equality in rural India. Thus August 04, 2016 which was published mainly discusses the current status of the social group migration in India. The findings from a survey of migrant workers in Ghatkopar in a city of Mumbai suburb were intriguing to say the least. Within four months of migrating, each of the surveyed families had managed to earn enough to lift them out of poverty and even to repay their loans. The survey however looked at a small sample of uh, just 60 families. An economic and political weekly paper written by Dr. Amrita Datta at the Institute for Home and Development IHD shows that migration might be helping those at the bottom of the socio-economic ladder that is the most being in uh, Bihar. That is the outcome from the primary database of uh, 904 households in 12 representative villages that are spread across 7 districts in Bihar. The findings from this study are clearly showed that uh, Bihar has the highest migration rates in the country as was shown by National Sample Survey Organization NSSO report based on 2007-2008 data. It is unlikely that the figures would have changed much when we compare the latest uh, period. The net migration rates across states clearly shows that Bihar has the highest number of out migrants as compared to in migrants per thousand population as the diagram clearly represents. Access to land is an important determinant of incomes in rural India and deprived social groups such as Dalits are often at a disadvantage due to poor land ownership. Traditionally, workers from this social group have been forced to work as uh, wage laborers and making themselves vulnerable to being exploited from the local landlords. 
This group seems to be resorting to migration to escape the exploitation ridden village economy. Datta's paper shows clearly that uh, remittance had the highest share in incomes of scheduled cash, scheduled tribes and Muslim households. The high share of remittance earnings needs to be seen in the context of the fact that scheduled cash, scheduled tribe and Muslim households have experienced the highest increase in share of households which has at least one migrant. In class terms, agriculture laborer households have reported the highest increase in share of households with at least uh, one migrant. The diagram clearly provides the caste wise, for instance, upper caste, other backward caste, Muslims, scheduled caste, and scheduled tribes, the extent of uh, the net income from agriculture and allied activities, and also the income distribution, which clearly shows that the income levels are uh, very high among upper caste and also furthermore the data reveals that OBCs, SC, ST and Muslims have a much higher share of their income coming from remittances. Similarly, when we see the diagrammatic presentation, the percentage point increase in proportion of households with migrants between 1999 and 2011, the diagram clearly depicts that the increase in share of migrant households with respect to the variables like uh, agriculture labor pattern, the various religious groups and also the uh, small and uh, medium peasants, large peasant and landlords and also the category on non-agriculture. The increase in share of migrant households clearly depicts that uh, the migration is uh, dominated in the case of agriculture laborers and the share of income is at higher level. Deciding to work outside the village is something that is happening in other parts of the country too. A field research conducted in Kanpur village of Meerut district in Uttar Pradesh, the results of which were highlighted in the paper by Satyendra Kumar in Economic and Political Weekly, clearly shows that young Dalit men prefer working outside the village even when they choose to live in the village. That is, the paper clearly stated, I quote, the supply of rural labor to the expanding non-form urban service sector and the flow of urban aspirations to the rural world have rapidly increased over the years, I unquote. Does migration help in economic terms? Yes, Datta's paper clearly shows that on an average, the households with migrant members earned approximately over Rs. 73,000 in 2011 as compared to an income of only Rs. 62,235 in case of households without migrant members. Between migration and welfare schemes such as uh, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme and overwhelming majority opts for the farmer. Income from casual labor in government programs including MG Narega and Backward Regions Grant Fund formed less than only 1% of the total income across all caste groups in 2011 except for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes where it constituted a slightly higher but still paltry of only 1.9% of their income. And in the paper it is quoted as several departments in the state are not functioning properly and the results may have been reflected in government programs such as MJ Narega. It has only been since 2005 that the state of Bihar has started functioning. Migrant households have to suffer a significant deterioration in quality of their lives when they migrate. Often one associates the cost of migration to be associated with the lack of proper dwelling for the worker and his or her family. This need to not be true for all migrant workers. In fact, a comparison of uh, average housing amenities in rural India and urban slums shows that the latter might be better off than the former. The figure provides data on the living conditions in rural households versus urban slums. The comparison with respect to the household conditions clearly shows that, for instance, 
those who perceived that they have a good housing condition are relatively lower in rural areas to the extent of only 45.90 whereas in the case of slums it is as high as 58.40 livable constitutes in rural areas 47.6 whereas in the case of slums it has come down to 37.6 dilapidated housing condition is a relatively higher in the case of rural areas as reported to be 6.5 percent whereas in the case of urban slums it is only 4. Similarly, the data on number of households having toilet facilities within the premises, then the public uh, toilet facilities, the proportion of uh, people who are opting for open defecation, the data on source of drinking water within the premises, similarly the source of drinking water near the premises and also the sources of drinking water away from their premises. When these housing conditions with respect to rural households and urban slums very clearly indicate huge differences and uh, indicating clearly that uh, the rural households have a lower level of quality of life in these indicators compared to urban slums. However, caution should be observed in taking these figures on face value. A study on the plight of migrant workers who had come to Delhi from drought hit Bundelkhand, however, showed abysmal living conditions for them. Similarly, most construction workers, an important sector where migrant workers are employed, often live on construction sites which lack in most basic uh, facilities. There are also other costs that they have to forego. For instance, I quote, houses in slum areas are often poorly located and congested which leads to several diseases. Migrants often do not have access to proper health facilities which leads them to lose their jobs or end up with life threatening illnesses. What is more important is the opportunities for a migrant worker who is very crucially very dependent on performance of sectors such as uh, area of construction work. From agricultural destinations such as state of Punjab, more people are now migrating for urban informal jobs. I quote, migration has shifted from rural to urban areas and earlier streams of uh, Kolkata, Assam and rural Punjab and Haryana, they have moved towards urban Punjab, Haryana, Delhi and Gujarat and in particular the four southern states of uh, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Any downturn in labor demand could immensely increase as hardships. In Bihar's Gopalganj district, job vacancies in Saudi Arabia are announced publicly with the beating of a drum. This is for the benefit of those seeking better jobs and better pay outside of their village. The perils of recession in Gulf countries have adversely affecting remittances based economies are all well known. While migration is definitely helping people seeking new opportunities, it cannot be a substitute for a generating quality employment in more stable sectors. Now let us discuss about uh, the migration flow across various religious groups. The movement of population following different religious practices can be examined from the national sample survey data as uh, depicted in the table. The followers of Muslim religion show low mobility in rural especially and also as well as in urban areas, while minority religious groups indicate higher proportion of uh, migration. The mobility among male migrant religious groups have declined during the period 1999-2000 when we compare with 1983 rural areas, while female migrants show considerable increase in their mobility in both rural and urban areas. The female migrants show little variation than male migrants in both rural and urban areas. The table depicts the percentage of migrants across different religious groups presented separately for rural and urban areas. Within uh, rural and urban, we can see the gender-wise differences across various religious groups 
starting from Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Sikh, Jain, Buddhist, Zoroastrians and others separately for each year, years that is 99, 2000 and also 1983. The source for this data which has been computed from National Sample Survey unit level data of uh, 38th and 55th round clearly reveals uh, the major variations across this uh, religious groups. That by religion and migration, they are two sides of the same coin. There are many reasons why people migrate. The factors like war, violence, persecution and political instability, they are also one aspect while the other aspects like economic reasons which are often underestimated, especially in countries like Germany make millions of people leave their families and friends behind to build new lives in a other countries. Overall, we may conclude by stating that the migration is a major component of population growth and uh, when we analyze the data, the migration in a limited way though it has been captured across different secondary sources like census and national sample surveys, it has provided ample opportunities to critically analyze over a period of time and it clearly shows the state wise differences and also the rural urban differences uh, with respect to gender wise that are existing in a contrast way. Overall, it clearly shows that the various social groups which are highly marginalized and also have no access to various facilities furthermore clearly shows the extent of their marginalization and one of the push factors that operates among them to move away from rural areas and to come to cities is uh, one of the important aspects which requires the questions of uh, appropriate policy and also the program framework to, to see that their quality of life can be addressed so that they, we can see that they also have a equitable opportunities in accessing various facilities and that way the inequalities can be brought among the various sections of population. Thank you.